Hello, this is Pixel Freak, and today we're doing part 61 of the Final Fantasy Dimensions walkthrough. So in this piece, we're picking up the summon, the last summon, at least for the chapter 3, uh, for Nox team, and that's going to be Leviathan. So here, we've actually just walked out of the tower from the very first piece of that tower. What I, I recommend doing that, where you go in, just get that story element out of the way, go through and read all that stuff. You, you've seen it all once if you watched the previous piece of this walkthrough, part 60. Uh, from there, we're going to need to walk northwest to go to the Chocobo Forest, pick up a black Chocobo, and then we're going to do some flying so we can make it to the cave where Leviathan is. So you can see here, I'm just kind of toggling my jobs around a little bit. I don't know if I really needed to show you this too much. Uh, I've been working on my jobs. At this point in the game, I had been working on my jobs quite a bit. Uh, trying to tweak them, get them exactly where I want them. I don't know exactly how much I'm going to be farming job points at the end of the game. So I just kind of am going one way with it. At least beating the game, I probably won't farm job points before I beat the game. But I am kind of considering doing some extra stuff for the uh, end game quests or the... Uh, maxing out of characters and such. Uh, I'm hoping to do some videos on that content afterwards. I'm not sure if it'll happen immediately when I finish the game, or if I'll wait a little while. I know Final Fantasy 3 has some pieces that, when I created the walkthrough, I made it an A to B direct shot through the game while picking up, I think, almost 100% of everything. I think somebody found at one point in time something that I missed. Uh, and then I annotated, but a lot of times people would leave comments about those videos and be like, Oh, you missed this treasure box? Oh, never mind, you went and got it. Uh, so there, there is a couple uh, missing pieces in there, but I think there is. Uh, but for the most part, everything's there, up into the boss. Aside from the boss, I didn't go get the extra job in Final Fantasy III, the Onion Knight. I didn't show that off, and I didn't show off any of the uh, extra stuff beyond that. There's even an, an optional store in the end of the game, and I intended to put that in there, and I recorded it. It just never made it as a, a full part in the walkthrough, so hopefully I can go back and get those pieces in for Final Fantasy III, and hopefully I can do the same thing for Final Fantasy Dimensions before I start Final Fantasy IV, because I, I want to put that game as well and do a walkthrough on it. It, sh it should be a lot faster than this Final Fantasy Dimensions walk through mostly because Final Fantasy Dimensions I had never played before and so I was kind of going through it and doing the walkthrough at the same time which makes the game a lot harder than you think or a lot longer I should say um, a lot of pieces I played through twice where I'd play it once and then play it again or uh, it would just be me being very thorough through a, a, a dungeon and then going through and editing very strictly all the places where I'd walk the wrong way so that, that takes an amazing amount of time so hopefully Final Fantasy IV, I'll be able to play it through, uh, straight through. I might even be able to do live commentary on that game, so make it look a little bit more like a let's play than a, than a walkthrough. But I'm still going to call it a walkthrough because I just don't like the term let's play. I don't know why, it's just it never, it never picked up with me. Um, I'd rather call it a playthrough than call it a let's play, even though I know that's what people are searching for on YouTube. Uh, not my game, so... Anyways, so this dungeon, um, like many of the dungeons before, there's nothing really spectacular here, aside from the boss. If you're not leveled up substantially, and when you can get a peek at my jobs and or my, my levels, which you did at the very beginning of this video, uh, you might want to rewind it and go see what those levels are. I didn't have too much trouble with him, but he put a little more hurt on me than some of the previous bosses in this game. Um, he's, this is where the bosses start to get a little more difficult, and especially in Chapter 4, they're, they're substantially more difficult. You actually have to, you'll see me start to implement uh, using safe and, and, or I should say, uh, protect and shell and, uh, and haste. What was it called safe in? It was called safe in one of the games. I think it was Final Fantasy VI. Anyways, um... I get the terminology mixed up between games, but it's all the same stuff. I think protect is the is the predominant term in most of the Final Fantasy games. But you'll see me use those spells. Um, one of the things you don't see me doing, and if anybody... I know a couple people have asked about this, and, and I just got a comment just recently saying um, that I was missing something or, or something along those lines. There's the fusion abilities that each of your primary characters gets. Now these fusion abilities, they you acquire them from gaining two different skills and then entering fights with them equipped or something along those lines. 
I'm purposefully actually skipping that piece. And the reason is, is what I'd like to do is, that's one of the things at the end, once I've beaten the game, I'd like to go back and kind of do a guide on it and, and talk about each one, how you get it, what jobs you need, what skills you need, how to uh, equip it and everything. So you'll probably see me beat the game without those. And the one that was addressed in the comments just recently was Hey Stega. And I don't know uh, which skills you need. I'm assuming you'd need to have white magic of a certain level uh, plus something else, red, maybe red mage or something like that. Um, I'll only be using the ones that I get naturally. I'm not purposefully going out and hunting them down, at least not at this point. I will go back and do that later. Might disappoint some people. It's just the way I'm choosing to play the game. So this dungeon, not too bad. It, it takes a little while because it is a, a dual part dungeon. Oh, it's kind of a dual part dungeon. The random encounters are all in this piece and the random encounters are a little bit high, enough that I edited some of them out as you've been watching, uh, see that happen. But once you get out, what I think right here is where I get out, boom, boom. And now there's no more randoms, I don't think, in this next piece. This next piece that you go up to, um, obviously you'll get randoms in the field, like I just did. But uh, once you get into the next piece of the dungeon, I don't think there's randoms in that piece. It's just Leviathan in there. So make sure you prepare completely, get your guys' job set up right, get all your MP up because you're going to fight him. And he's, he's a beast. Quite literally. Kind of as a cool side note, I've been recently playing with some new equipment. Uh, I've got, I've run into a whole bunch of new equipment that I've got for my channel here. Um, uh oh, I was poisoned and I walked inside. That was an accident. Uh, one of the things is a webcam, so I'll be able to capture me talking about games while I'm playing them, if I'd like to. Uh, I do know that some of the bigger channels like to do that, especially reaction, re reactionary stuff. Uh, PewDiePie does that. Uh, he likes to do those reactionary videos. I, I'm not into him too much. And my thought is, is that anything that I don't feel is awesome won't be awesome when it comes from me. Uh, only things that I'm really into are gonna are gonna really shine on my channel. I think that's that way with a lot of things in life. Is only things that you're passionate about will you truly be good at. So uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do that very much. We'll see. We'll see if it kind of evolves into that. But there is gonna be some talking head videos coming out of this channel where I'm kind of sharing ideas that are creeping up in my head. I get invaded often by ideas, and I like to share them and talk about those ideas with other people. So uh, prepare for that. Uh, I also got a new microphone around here somewhere but that new microphone uh, is mostly going to be used i'm hoping for guests so that whenever i have people over here i can have other people my friends talk about games uh, we often talk i've got a monthly gig that i do here with all my friends and we all talk about games and stuff so it'd be kind of cool to get some of them on the mic too and have them share their ideas as well my wife also said she was somewhat interested even though she's not really too much of a gamer she does play games once in a while on her phone and so it'd be interesting to get her opinion just from uh somebody that's less involved in in this industry somebody that's not reading all these blogs constantly like i am uh, so that's happening too and I'm also making some changes to the, the overall content. Okay, here we go. I'm moving in. Is this the one where there's no... Yeah, okay, good. I was like, a castle? What? Uh, I'm also going to make some changes, though, to the content. Uh, I think I'm going to do about two or three reviews uh, a week. But moving forward, I'm not going to do reviews anymore on pay-to-win games. And I'm doing an announcement video on all this. I'm just kind of highlighting it all here for those that are interested, I guess. Um, yeah, pay to win games though, they're, it's too difficult to determine exactly how good the game is without playing a very large substantial amount of it. Uh, and yeah, I also have a, almost an ethical problem with, with giving those games the same level of consideration as the, the, uh, the great experiences that you get with a pay once game. Um, there are reasons for that. There's fundamentally gameplay mechanics that break when you have uh, pay to win models. They're just broken games. And I think for that reason, I shouldn't be scoring them alongside of the other games. So here, um, that big tidal wave, that's what you gotta worry about the most. You're best off with a dual hero, a dual hero, a dual healer setup. Um, I think I, I end up using a lot of Sylph and um, my white mage. I thought I had another 
I know the monk at the top, he's got an ability he can use to heal people, and the ninja also has an ability to heal people. Just to balance the game, uh, you, it, it would be probably the best bet to have two fully, you know, powered up white mages. You're probably not going to have that. That's going to be really weird for you to have, because we went two white mages, that means you've been growing them for a long time. Uh, if you have that, this fight probably would be not too tough. But if not, you fall back on whatever your best second uh, healer would be, and I'd go with two healers, and then just use melee or, or black magic to fight them off. You really have to watch out for those waves, though, and I would say every single round, your white mage needs to be casting its best heal spell on everybody in the party. Even if you're full HP, still do it. The reason for that is because you can get hit with two tidal waves in a row, and that'll just wipe you out. Like, you know, it'll do such horrible damage to your party that, that you, you might have a hard time recuperating from it. So, two healers is the best way to go. Uh, keep your keep your white mage casting constantly their highest cure spell. Kiraja, I think, is the, is the highest one. You can see here I'm using Silk. Even though it's not exactly the best, it does some. It does enough. And that right there, that is just a taste of what's to come. The fights get even worse as you go into the next chapter. It's, it gets really bad. Huh. I still try to do double attack at the end. Take that. Son of a bitch. So getting back to uh, to where you started is not exactly the easiest trek in the, in the world. You'll see here how I do it. Um, I think I tried to use teleport at one point in time, and it just doesn't work. But you'll see you'll see how I get back. Um, I think I go back the most optimal way. But you do have to do a little bit of foot work to get back. It's going to take, it's like four minutes, I think, of video of me getting back. Um, anyways, so uh, I was talking about the reviews that I'm doing. So I'm not going to be doing the reviews on those freemium apps as much anymore. Something like Quadrupus Rampage, I like to bring that up often as uh, as an example of a game that did free to play right there are other examples the, there was a heroes of order and chaos by gameloft that i thought did at least when it, when it was launched it was doing a pretty good job of being a free game games like that uh may or may not get a score they're they're they could still they're all definitely still get covered. Even games that I don't like the way the pay model works still get covered. I'm going to weigh in very candidly on how I think that model works, but they'll get, sh they'll get shown still. They're just not going to get the consideration of a full review. And the reason for that is because, as I mentioned before, the broken gameplay mechanics. And they are broken. They're very, very much broken. Some of those talking head videos I was uh, talking about doing are going to address why they're broken. There's a very logical reason why that model of gaming hasn't really come up until now. And, and even though games are being made like that, and they're being made left and right, that's not proof of their success as a game, that's proof of their success as a, as a way to monetize themselves. They are commercially viable, and they are entertainment um, devoid. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, it's a little harsh, because obviously they're bringing some entertainment people are still playing. They're exploitative, to say the least. They're just exploit they're exploitative, but commercially viable. So, uh, w my argument then, and I guess I'll get into this more when I do make a video, my argument then is, is that they're not necessarily, they're not a game the same way that, that games on consoles have been. Games on consoles in the past have been, uh, you pay a price, so it's commercially viable and then you get an entertainment experience. I don't think that pay-to-win games provide that entertainment experience. It's not engaging the same way. And not because the graphics are, are worse, that's not it. It's that, it's that you're constantly reminded that you're in the real world, and you have to make financial transactions, and for every increment that you'd like to make, there's gonna be an associated cost and often to an exploited level. So I'll explore that a little bit more, um, but I, I've thought quite a bit about it. But it does help too that I've actually, I've got a college degree. I've, uh, I've actually got a, a decent job myself. This is not, and anyway, this is a completely my hobby. I don't really even make money doing this. Like I've, I've bought some new equipment recently. Most of that equipment came out of the out of the proceeds from this channel, but for the most part, this is not a profitable channel. It just pays for itself is all. It pays for the games and it pays for the equipment. 
Um, but I have a college degree. My, my degree is actually in, uh, it's a, it's a degree that's mixed in business and technology, which allows me to talk pretty well about the gaming industry. So I think I'll have some interesting ideas there and, uh, and I hope to share them in, in the future and have good conversation, uh, in the comments, but we'll, we'll see if that works out. So that was the track back, and you're going to kind of see me poke through my jobs here a little bit. And then, then we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'm getting ready for the battle through the tower here, which we're going to see on the next part, part 62. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the commentary here. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, this has been Pixel Freak.